G'day, I'm Elijah. Today I'm gonna to walk through the menu system of the original Sony A7. We're gonna set the, the camera up for photo and video use. Okay, first off, we need to get the uh, battery installed and SD. So for the SD card, all it is is just in here. You just gotta push it that way, this little door, and it flings open, and you install the SD just in there. Battery. So flip the camera upside down. There's a little latch right here. Just give it a push over and it opens. Get the battery. The battery's got some contacts right here. The contacts are gonna be on the outside of the of the camera. Like that. Not on the inside, but the outside. Slide it in there. A little there's a little blue latch right there. Just flick that open, that battery comes out, but we want that battery in. We'll keep that battery in. Turn the door, flick that across, that little latch just there, just flick that across, it locks in. And then we turn the on button. It's in the off position at the moment. Just flick it on. And now it's on. Now that the camera's on, we can do the date the area and date time setup. Okay, so enter. To enter, all like all you have to do is just push that little round this center button in that round wheel. There's one certain button, that's just the OK button. So just click that. So you just go to the country or whatever the time zone that you're in. Enter. Data savings off. Um go through and set all that uh, whatever what is it six enter so it says it's running on NTSC okay here in Australia we we use PAL and um, running it the other option gives you an extra 10 frames okay so let's start so we've got these little menus at the top here. So that first one that's in orange, that's the camera um, menu. We've got the settings, connectivity, apps, viewing, and toolbar or toolbox. So each of these pages have got a number of pages. So the camera setting, the camera menu has seven pages. So that's page one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and this has got the uh, six pages. So each each menu have have their own pages. So we'll start from the camera menu. So we'll scroll down. This is page one. So we have image size. So, so as well, some some of the options can't be accessed due to what you've got the camera set on. At the moment, we've got it set on video mode. So we're gonna be using video and manual mode. I use manual mode for when I'm shooting uh, photos and I use video mode for when I'm shooting a video. Okay. Let's go back to the menu. Okay, aspect ratio, let's go into that. So we've got 3 by 2 or 16 by 9 16 by 9 is just the crop of the 3 by 2 3 by 2 is the actual sensor and it gives you the true uh, aspect ratio. Quality. We've got raw, raw JPEG, extra fine, fine, standard. So these are just J, uh, JPEGs, right? Extra fine is the uh, more detailed version of the J, of just the fine JPEG. Um, I just go raw. I don't bother with JPEG because you've got more information in RAW. So you can bring up the shadows or bring down the highlights and retain all that information. Um, 
file format. So for the A7, we only have the older AV CHD compared to the newer cameras with the XAVC. And MP4, so we'll just go the better quality one, which is uh, AVCHD. Um, go to page two. On page two, we have recording uh, settings. Let's go into that. So we have uh, 24, 24 at, at lower quality. Um, that's 24 meg, 60p at 28 meg and then we've got 60i and 60i at 24 so with 60i that's uh, 60 frames per second interlace we don't want to interlace we want progressive so make sure you click on the 60p for progressive at 28 that's the highest quality 28 meg um, we'll go that can I record DVD just at save on blu-ray just okay so here in Australia, if I have this set to PAL, this would be uh, 50p. So shooting with the other option gives you an extra 10 frames at 60. Um, we'll go down. Drive mode, so this is for photo. So we've got single shot, continuous shooting, speed priority shooting, uh, 10 second timer if you go across because it's a little arrow so it's saying we can move it across so we can do 10, 2 seconds or 10 seconds this one is self timer continuous so we have uh, C3 ok so C3 gives us images 3 images at 10 second timing and this gives us 5 images at 10 second timing ok so they're just the options that we can use. I just leave it on continuous. Uh, what else? We'll go back onto the menu. So the menu button is just obviously up the top here where it says menu. Okay, flash mode. So you can go through and muck around with your flash settings. I don't use the flash. Um, yeah, I don't use the flash at all. So page three, focus zone. So... Here we are, we have different focus options. I'll just leave it on center. So it just focuses on whatever's in the center of the sensor. Okay. I might put a lens on here. So to put the lens on, you've got a red, a white dot here, white dot there. Just match those dots. Turn it. Okay. So going to back what we were looking at when we went to the focus option, we have this little little square. That's what we're going to be, what the computer is, what the camera is going to tell the system to focus on. Okay. So. There's zone, wide. So let's have a look at the wide. So the wide will pretty much just take a capture of, it, it will have a guess of what it wants to auto focus on pretty much of the whole sensor. Zone. So with the zone, it's pretty much what's in the center, but a little bit spread out. We can move that zone across to what we think we're going to be shooting and it just gives the camera a bit more an idea of what you want to focus on so that just makes it a bit quicker when it's auto focusing with the a7 the auto focus system isn't the best so don't really rely on it um what else do we have center flexible spot wide but yeah i'll just use center again i don't use center because I just usually mainly uh, manual focus. Focus settings, focus eliminator off. All that is is this little light here. Uh, I'll get it highlighted right there. This little red light that comes on when you're in low light situation and that just helps illuminate the object that you're shooting. 
exposure set. So 0 0.03, change it to 0 0.05. I've never changed it, I've just left it at three. ISO, you can uh, set that to what you want. There's an auto option, so you can set that at a minimum of 100, and then you can just cap it out at something. So if you want to cap it out at 1600 so it doesn't get too noisy, whatever you want to cap that at. Or you can just set it to where you want it. This wheel here, just turning the wheel is the actual ISO wheel. So that goes all the way up to 25,600. You wouldn't use that though, that'd be just too noisy. Um, go back to the menu. Also, so you can just set that to whatever. Page four. Okay, metering mode. So you'd use this for when you're using um, your auto uh, ISO. Um, so it, it it sets to whatever you set your um, what's this wheel called? Your exposure compensation wheel. So metering mode, I just usually set that to multi, so it takes a, a well, it calculates from the whole frame of, uh, of what you're wanting to shoot. So say if we go, so let's, let's just go to the main page, right? So say, let's just close that up a bit more. Okay, so this is our frame. So it senses there's a lot of shadow here shadow here so we're at negative two right but we want to be we want to have that at zero at a, a balance of zero right our exposure we wanted to be at zero so obviously if you're shooting there's a lot of white it's saying oh we're overexposed at plus two and now it's saying that we've got a good exposure at whatever this is okay so it says negative three there because it's picking up all that shadow there. So it's just guessing. It's pretty much metering mode. It's just guessing of what the exposure should be. Um, so obviously, if, if you've got a lot of white in the area, it's going to say, oh, it's overexposed. Obviously, if you've got a lot of black in the area, you've got a lot of, uh, you're underexposed. So depending on what you want to see. So say if I want to shoot that bottle, okay? That bottle, uh, that bottle is... Exposed fine. So we just go click and that bottle is shot fine. There's obviously no card in there. But um yeah, so sometimes if you just rely on this, you're not gonna have an accurate, but it just gives you an idea of the overall picture. So obviously this is negative, right? So we wanna um we can drop the the shutter, or we can, where is it? Bring up the ISO. It says it's negative, negative uh, one. But yes, yeah, so that's, that's not negative one. It's actually exposed pretty good. It's just because of the dark tiles. Either way. So that's your metering mode. Just leave it a multi. So metering mode, just leave to multi. Balance, uh, white balance, auto. So this is something you want to be um, getting in the habit of changing. So you've got daylight, shade, cloudy, incandescent, warm. Quite a bit of options here. Normally if you're just shooting with um, video lights, you wouldn't lock that. So mine is locked at 5600 Kelvin, so I'll just lock it there. Or if you want a more accurate uh, white balance, you can go down to the bottom where it says set. You get your white balance card, it's a little gray card. So, so you click on this option. You you get your white your what your white balance card. It's a little gray card. I don't have one on me, but you pretty much just get that little dot center it on the card 
and in the area that you're shooting in, click the OK button. It's going to take a sample and it will give you the true white balance of the area that you're shooting in. But obviously I haven't got my grade card, so it's not, not correct. But go back to menu. So that's your white balance. So you obviously get in the habit of getting shooting in correct white balance because if you're shooting a video in multiple locations and you try and color grade, it's going to be quite difficult because your white balance is, is not going to be correct if you don't set your white balance correctly. Uh, DR range auto HDR. I've never really played with this. Yeah, I've never really, never really changed this. So just leave that. Creative style standard. So you can go into that. So this is pretty much just uh, LUTs or presets. These are all trash. So I wouldn't even bother with this. So just leave it on standard. Um, picture effect is off. Zoom off. Um, go on video. Does that change? Yeah, so picture effect is for video. So just leave that off as well. We don't want to fuck around with that. It's it's not that great. So with standard for when you're shooting video, I've just uh, reduced mine, my contrast to negative three, uh, saturation negative three, sharpness, oh, go back. Sharpness, yeah, make a negative three. You can bring the sharpness up in post. So that's how I shoot with the A7. Um, go to page five, focus magnifier. So what that is, is you can actually zoom into something to make sure you got the correct um, focus. So if I go into my dishes here or the water bottle, I make sure that this is correctly focused. But yeah, anyway. So we go back. That's focus magnifier. That's handy. That just helps you focus on something. Um, long exposure and R on. Lock on autofocus. So we can lock on autofocus. So you can turn this on and then you can click on an object and it will lock onto an object, but it's not a very good system, so I don't even bother with it. Smile to take, you can puck, muck around with that. Um, program auto. So with movie, I like to have full control of the exposure. So if you, you can go program auto, so it just automatically sets your aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, it plays with all three to get the correct exposure. Aperture priority. So what that does is locks your aperture. So your aperture wheel is this one at the front. So it locks your aperture and uh, it it adjusts the shutter speed and ISO. Well, if your ISO is on auto, auto it adjusts your ISO. If it's locked, it will only just adjust your shutter speed to get the correct uh, exposure. Shutter priority, so what that does is lock your shutter speed. This is your shutter wheel here. So it locks that. And it adjusts your aperture. And if your ISO is on auto, it'll adjust your ISO as well to get to get the correct uh, exposure. Manual, manual exposure. So that lets you control the shutter speed, the aperture, and the ISO if it's not set to auto. Um, to get the correct uh, exposure. So I shoot with manual. Go back. Okay. Um, auto slow down. What's this? Hmm. I'm not too sure what that is. Audio recording on. 
audio recording level. So with this, you need to have this in movie mode, all right? You won't be able to control the, the level with in manual mode, so make sure you have you, your settings on movie mode. So it's set on movie mode at the moment. So with this, we just use the wheel to turn that up and use the wheel to turn it down. So if you're shooting with a, an external mic, just leave it at set to one and use the preamps on the external mic. If you haven't got a mic, well then obviously you need to turn it up and just use the little microphone. So we've got a mic here and a mic here. Sorry, here and there. Little holes there on the side of the EV. That's the microphones. If not, you can just open this and use that red port for the 3.5 mil jack, the red one. Just use that to connect a, an external microphone and that'll be, be much better sound quality. Um, and then you can set that to one if you're using an external mic. Audio out timing, live, wind reduction. So wind noise reduction, so leave that off. You can turn it on, but it sounds like trash. It just makes it sound muddy. Memory, so you can set um, set options for one and two. One and two is on the wheel here. So we've got one and two. So you can set an option for different shooting. So you can set one up for uh, 24 frames per second, set one up for slow motion at 60 frames per second. Um, but yeah, and then you can just save that. So instead of having to go into the manual and changing your frames, you can just set them, save them, and then just click one and two for whatever you're shooting. Okay, so let's go to, that was our last page. That was page seven. So let's go to the uh, uh, settings menu. So we've got zebras. You can turn that on if you want. I'll just leave it off. Um, manual. Focus assist on. So that's your focus peaking. That's handy. Um, focus magnifying time, no limit, grid lines. So you can go through and pick whatever you want. I usually just, I'm happy with the rule of thirds. That's what I use. Audio uh, level display. So that's just, I'll leave that on. That's just this. Um, so if we go to movie mode, so you got channel one, channel two, so left and right. That's what that is. Uh, that's the audio level display. Auto review. So if you take a picture, it'll pop up for two seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds or off. Up to you what you want to do. If you want to leave it off, you just got to hit that dis the play to display a preview of what you took. So go page two, display button. Monitor finder, yeah, so you can change that around. Peaking level, mid, so I'll, I'll leave it on mid. You can go high, you can go low, but I find mid works good for me. Peaking color, so you can go red, yellow, white. I like red. Exposure set, guide, yep. Yeah. That's just um, this little thing here. Just uh, let you know where, you, where you're at on exposure. Create a focus on off. You can adjust that to what you want, but again, I don't really muck around with auto focus. Zoom settings, optical zoom only. What is uh, Finder. So with the A7, I don't really use it for video. So if I'm just using this camera for video, I would just live, use it on um, monitor. Okay. And I'll just go with what the monitor is. And then if you're shooting with video and photo, you could just go auto because then you're most of the time, if you're shooting photo, your eyes going to go to this because what's going to happen, this auto. So when it senses, there's a little sensor here, when it senses that your eye is at the uh, EV, it'll switch over to the EV. But if you want to lock it, like that, It won't, it just disables that sensor. So this is always the monitor showing. Um, release without lens. So what that does, it's usually set as disable when you get your camera. 
but click enable because what happens when when the when the camera's trying to find little connect connectors see these little connections what that is is just the electrical system for the autofocus and aperture um, and if that is not enabled you you won't be able to use like manual lenses because manual lenses the cheaper lenses it doesn't have the you know the autofocus system or aperture system it's just it's just metal there's no connective there's no connectors so if you want to use cheaper manual lenses or vintage lenses yeah just make sure you click enable or she won't be able to take photos okay auto focus with shutter so on so that's just when you click the shutter when that's halfway so you when you push down halfway it like it'll try and get a focus and then you push it down all the way and it'll get a click i'm in movie mode so it won't let me take a photo but that's what that is so when you click halfway it will try and get auto focus push down and take the shot so that's on uh, AEL, that's your AEL button right here. So you can set that to on or off. So if you're shooting uh, autofocus, you can hold that down and then if it's not, if the autofocus isn't working, just hold that down and it switches over to manual focus and you can just manually get your focus. Um, e front curtain, yeah, shadow. So, yeah, so this is for your flash. I don't muck around with flash. Go to page five. So if you've got full frame lenses and crop APS-C lenses, set that to auto and your system will automatically detect if you're going to chuck a APS-C size sensor onto your full frame camera body and it will crop the full frame sensor down to an APS-C size sensor. So then you can use both APS-C lenses on your full frame camera body. So just go auto. If it's not working, well then just force it with on or off and you'll be right. Um, auto focus micro adjust, lens comps, I don't, I don't really muck with them. Function menu, uh, custom keys. So yeah, I don't really change the keys. I just leave, this is the shutter. This is the aperture. The wheel is the ISO. I don't, yeah, I don't muck around with it. I just leave it set to what it is. It's asking me if I want to change the EV dial comp, and no, nah, just leave it. Um, the movie button always dial wheel, yeah. So just leave all this to what it is, unless you want to change it. If you don't like the way it's set up, you can go through and play around with and swap swap the controls um so connectivity so you can send pictures to what uh, to your smartphone airplane mode all that jazz page two access point uh, device name if you can change the name of this device it just comes up with like l is so i l c e so you can just change it to a7 if you want but yeah just leave it it's fine um go to apps so this is your apps on the on the system this is an app that everyone should look into if you're shooting with an older camera because all these older e-mount cameras have got a restriction of uh, rec a recording restriction of 30 minutes when you go with through the when you download this app of uh, google just open when open memories tweak you can actually turn, so go across to video, and we can turn off this, this limit. So now we can record up to 13 hours. I mean, obviously, as long as I've got enough memory on my SD card and as long as I've got enough battery and the camera doesn't overheat, well, then you can record up to 13 hours. Normally, your camera doesn't do it. That's why you got to download that app. So that's a, that's a handy app. Um, go to um, viewing menu. We've got two pages on this. So you can go through and click delete. This is a faster way to delete things. So if you've got a lot of photos, you can just either delete one 
or you can go through and delete um, all the photos in that date. It's just a faster way to delete. Um, so display rotation manual or uh, auto. Yeah, so I like auto. Auto does a good job. Uh, enlarge 4K still. Yeah, that's fine. Monitor brightness. I like to turn that up all the way. That's your brightness. I turn it up all the way. It makes it easier to see when it's in, in you know, daytime outside. It's harder to see. Um, viewfinder. So you can turn that up as well. There's a viewfinder. You can turn the brightness up on that. You can adjust the temperature. Page two. Time menu. I don't. I've never played with that. Um, my dog guide. Until you confirm. So yeah, just leave that as cancel first because it comes up if you go to delete something ask you would you like to delete and you click confirm if you don't have that as that it'll just delete it straight away and you you might not want that because you might delete something by accident uh, display close so this is the display so we've got this as the highest viewing display set you can just set the standard but yeah just leave this high um, power saving so if you haven't if you're not going to touch this camera after one minute 10 seconds Two minutes, five minutes, thirty minutes. But yeah, if you don't touch it for one minute now, it will turn off after one minute. So PAL, this is what we looked at the start of the shift, at the start of this uh, video. So we can either change it to PAL or leave it as NTSC. With NTSC, we've got uh, an extra ten frames. But in Australia here, it's better to shoot in PAL because of this the light flickering. Um, yeah, it's not much really. Not much scenarios where when you're shooting inside that you can shoot NTSC. Majority of the in time shooting, you might have to slow everything down to uh, your 24 frames, 25 frames because of the flickering. And because if you have your shutter speed turned up too high, you'll catch that flickering on the camera. So, yeah, it's probably just best to shoot at PAL. But if you're shooting outside, well, then you can shoot with what you want because the sun isn't going to flicker. Um... So page three, cleaning mode. So you can just clean the sensor or you can manually clean the sensor with a sensor cleaning kit. Um, remote control. So you can, if you buy a controller, you just plug that in and control that. Uh, HDMI resolution, 1080p. Uh, what can you change it to? Oh, so you can either go progressive or interlace. So, yeah, whatever. Control for HDMI. Um... So this is just pretty much connectivity stuff. So USB connection, mass storage. I just leave it on auto because um, it does a pretty good job of detecting if it's like you're plugging into a charger or if you're actually plugging into a computer. So yeah, auto is fine. I don't really change. I don't muck around with this. And this is just going into your setting up stuff like what we did at the start of the video. Um, so you can f uh, change your file uh, name, number, uh, folder name. So when you're like, you know, bringing stuff onto the computer, it'll come up with the name and then one, two, three, four, five, six, or whatever, you know, whatever the number you set. Um, version, so you can just check out the version. I'm pretty sure I've updated this when I bought it, and I'm pretty sure the latest version is 3.2. You can just double check that with uh, on the Sony website. So just go um, Sony A7 latest firmware, and it will bring up the actual website with the latest download. And if it's not the latest download, just download it, install it, and it will give you whatever upgrades it can give you. That's pretty much the walkthrough of the menu system. That's all the menu and the setting up of the camera. So now our camera is set up to pretty much do photo and video. Again, the photo, photo side is nice. Video side is a little bit old. Um, the newer cameras have the XAVC HD. This is only AVC HD. But it's still nice because the sensor is a full frame sensor. So you still get a nice image. But there's not much information compared to the newer um, formats that are out there. I'll just give you a quick rundown on the controls. So again, this is your monitor. You can flip that around. Whatever. It doesn't flip up. But so we have the menu button. That's up there. C2, 
that just adjusts your um, manual focus, auto focus, continuous. Um, C1 is your uh, magnifier um, function button. So it's a quick button to go through and change your main main uh, settings that you want to be adjusting. That's handy button. Um, so your shutter wheel up top here. That's your shutter wheel. Yep. We've got the ISO wheel. Yes, yeah, so you can adjust your ISO with that wheel. White balance. So just click that and you go through and set your white balance to whatever you want to set it to. Uh, preview. Um, and you can delete as well. If you just want to delete one by one, you can just click delete. Exposure compensation. So if you want to have a little bit darker, you can go through and click you know, negative one up to negative three intervals. That's your exposure wheel. That's for when you're using auto and that'll automatically adjust. And whatever you set this to is whatever, you know, it will try and reach that as well on that exposure setting there. That's your display. Um, aperture and wheel. That's your aperture wheel there. So you can adjust your aperture through that. Some old lenses, you can adjust the aperture on the actual lens, not this one. It's just adjusted on that. Uh, on and off. Uh, and then you got your main uh, wheel here, which is set on movie. You got two and one. Manual. Uh, shutter priority. Aperture priority. P. I'm not sure what P is. Yeah, don't know what that is. And then auto settings. So it'll just pretty much just go everything auto. So it's intelligent auto. So it will do your photos automatically um, with exposure. Um, photos will do the automatic exposure. SCN, I'm not sure what SCN is. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, panoramic, so you can do cool panoramic photos. But that's pretty much all the, oh, sorry, and your recording button right here. So that's your recording button for your movies. You got your inputs on the side here. That's pretty much everything. You've got a if you've got a different um, if you're using like a dummy battery, that's what that little flap is for. So you can have your dummy battery and close that door. But yeah, so this has been the setup for the Sony A7, the very first A7. All right, guys, that's been the menu walkthrough and setup for the uh, Sony A7. If you guys got any more questions about the Sony A7, just let us know in the comments down below. Also, if this has been helpful, give me a like, give me a subscribe. I'm trying to build that up. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.